Josh Green here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Peter Fury here in Cardiff. Travel down today, how are we doing Peter? Yeah, we travelled down today. Uh, it was uh, no traffic, it was uh, good. I think it took us uh, two hours to get here, but you know, fine. Easy stuff. Um, exciting times for Huey Fury after a long time out the ring. Around about three years, he had his comeback on the GBM show a couple of weeks back and back out again on Saturday night, flying. Yeah, he's moving along. Um, we've got this fight, uh, all being well, no injuries. He's got another one the 29th of June. So, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's busy. In terms of keeping busy, that's always something he, he struggled with. He always had niggling injuries and he couldn't quite string together those fights. How important is that going to be to get him back to that top level? Well, it's very important, and this is why we're making up for lost time, where he's not just training in the gym, he's training and boxing, so under the lights. So the best way to get rid of ring rust and account for them three years is to uh, pick the pace up, get busy, keep fighting, and, you know, that's see the improvement for the world to see every time he fights. What's it like been like for yourself seeing Huey back in the gym and back doing what he loves after so long away? Because I know it's been mentally and physically a... Obviously a very tough time for him. Do you know, I've never forced any of my sons to box. And the thing is, you know, I'm not going to see anybody, never mind my family, I'm not going to see anybody getting that ring if they're not 100%. And he hasn't, been an under, he hasn't been 100% in any of his fights. So he always had underlying issues. So, you know, enough was enough. So to take the time out and rectify everything he's had has been a blessing. So at least now he's got a clean slate. There's no niggles, there's nothing. And he can just get on full scale with his career. I was going to say, step up to eight round to eight rounds today. I, think, I believe it was six a couple of weeks ago. How quick are you looking to get him to that top level again? Uh, that depends on Yui. It's as quick as as quick as he's able. You know, he's been a long time out. You know, um, I can see a lot of ring rust in his last fight. You know, but we are where we are. You know, you can train as much as you want in the gym. It's another story under the lights, but. I'm looking to see a major improvement from the last time. I was going to say, in terms of the style that we see from Huey, how different is it going to be this time around from what we saw over three years ago now? It'll be a lot different, and you'll see, you'll see Saturday. You know, now it's a different, he can up his game, he shook off a fair bit of ring rust, so like I say, I'm looking to see improvements in every fight. And, you know, sitting on his shots and, you know, hopefully getting his opponent out of there. Do you believe it's needed more than ever now to do things with style and get those knockouts? It's a very congested place at the moment, the heavyweight division. You need to do things with style to make a statement, to get noticed. 100%, you know, people want to see good fights, and that's what it's about. But don't expect things 100 miles an hour. He's been three years out. This is a... Uh, this, this, this professional sport, especially in the heavyweights, you know, inactivity is a killer. So... Um, you know, considering where he's come from and his illnesses and whatnot, we're happy where he is. And uh, yeah, I expect you'll see glimpses of where he's going to in this fight on Saturday. What's Huey's promotional situation at the moment? Is he with Boxer on a contract or is he, is he free agent? Where can we expect to see him fight? You know, look, we've always been uh, a supporter with Sky. And uh, he's under no contract at the moment because it ran out. You know, he's been inactive for three years. But, you know, so... He's, he's here and he's available and it's fight by fight for Yui. Um, Savannah Marshall, she's been mixing it between boxing and MMA. I mean, how do you juggle that as a trainer? I know she's got other people that work with her on the M MMA side, but for you seeing her going to that code, is it is it difficult to juggle? No, not really. I, I, you know, I'm uh, enjoying it. I see her every Wednesday. Uh, which is enough she does the boxing work she's doing a bit of sparring with April now April Hunter as well so um, yeah she's keeping her hand in the boxing but I can see the MMA style as well so it's uh, I'm looking forward to it actually I'm looking forward to going up taking a seat for a change and enjoying the show when she does come back and have a, another professional boxing fight which is inevitable do you think there will be need at a time to adapt back to boxing full-time and being on a full-time training program? Not really. She's had a lot of experience. Um, and the thing is, yeah, we'll get her back with a steady fight and then she'll be back. So we'll get her in camp, 
one fight and then she's in for all the big fights again. What's the plan looking like for Savannah at the moment to get him back in the boxing ring? Are there anything in particular that appeals to her? I know the Caressa Shields fight is obviously something that, that jumps out the rematch. Well, we're here now this week and uh, we need to speak to Boxer and find out exactly what's happening with Savannah and with dates and stuff. But yeah, definitely uh, she's back and uh, yeah, we'll liaise with Boxer while we're here and we'll, we'll, we'll speak about it properly. Have there been any conversations around a rematch with Clarissa? Or? There's been conversations, of course there has, and uh, you know, fees has been agreed on our side. So it's a case now of uh, sitting down with Ben Shalom and seeing what's what with it. I'd like to dip into the Peter Fury brain for a second, if that's okay, because the heavyweight division is a, a busy place at the moment. Anthony Joshua has got so many options on the table, supposedly coming back in September and fighting at Wembley, Philip Hergovic, Daniel Dubois, Deontay Wilder and Zile Zhang. It's quite a hand there that could be placed towards him. Who would you like to see him fight? Any, any one of them. They're all good fights. So it's nice. You know, it's, uh, it's nice that all of these now are starting to fight each other as well. So it's good. Good for boxing. Do you see the Saudi influence and the amount of money that's being pumped in over there as a, as a good thing for boxing? <coughs> Of course, we're in a society today where anything you can do anything with money, so it's happening. So I think it's a good thing, good thing for boxing, definitely the heavyweights. Good to see these fights happening. I have to ask you about the undisputed fight with Tyson and Alexander Rusik, a fight that we've waited for for a long, long time. How do you analyse it? I think uh, to analyse this properly, uh, this is the best opponent that Tyson's been up against. But, you know, he's... Tyson's got a lot more advantages than Usyk in size, he can box, and he can punch as well. So you know, Tyson on a, on his A on on his A form should come through this fight and be undisputed champion. I've seen some people suggest that it could be a boring fight, a bit of a chess match. How do you how do you respond to that? Uh, the public will be looking at his last fight. Well, listen, <laughs> his last fight was against a fighter who's never had a fight before. He's not interested in it. This is a different ball game. This will be a, a fully focused Tyson, and I expect to see the best Tyson, because the best Tyson will get the job done. Anything less than the best Tyson, he'll come unstuck. Peter, really appreciate your time as always. Take care of yourself, and we'll see you soon. No worries.